Location. Location is Mothership Coffee, Coffee Roasters, Mothership, Mothership Coffee here in uh, Ferguson's. A place called Ferguson's downtown Las Vegas. I really don't know why I don't come down here more often. This place is uh, pretty damn near perfection, at least as the weather currently stands. Balmy um, 80 some degrees. I went with a bourbon vanilla iced latte. Today's Monday, November 2nd which means tomorrow is Tuesday, November 3rd, which means tomorrow could also be the, uh, the end of civilization as we know it because we're voting for uh, the next president of the United States tomorrow, which also means today this vlog could be the last vlog ever if there's no more society, in which case it's, uh, it's been a fun ride and uh, good news is that we got in one last poker session. Last night, Bellagio, 510, No Limit Hold'em. things happening in this session with the second best hand ever created. In this hand there's a straddle on before the under the gun player raises it up to $70. Button puts in a three bet to $190. So it's already three bet before we look down at pocket kings in the small blinds here. That's not going to stop us from putting even more money into this pot. Uh, with the straddle on stack sizes are diminished. We're $1,500 effective here so what was 150 big blinds effective in a normal 510 game is now 75 big blinds effective. So so we're just looking for uh, an opportunity to try and put as much money into this pot as possible. We're going to go ahead and make it $510 here in the small blind. Our opponent, who was first to act, is undeterred and he's putting the rest of the money in there. Again, it's $1,500 effective. Back over to the player on the button who thinks for a pretty long time and is studying me given me to look over and uh, decides to fold but he flips over pocket queens as he's folding. Don't know if he was doing that on purpose. I think he probably was just to show uh, how he feels about the situation. But that's not really a great sign when we're holding pocket kings here because we kind of are hoping that our opponent in the early position, we're hoping that his range is made up a lot of pocket queens, ace king, and uh, I don't know if pocket jacks is really gonna be all that thrilled to just go ahead and stick it in there, maybe. We're in the, uh, the early stages of this session, so we don't have uh, that strong of a read. But uh, anyway, it's not really gonna matter so much. We put $510 in there, and again, 75 big blinds effective. It's all going in there. So uh, my opponent asked if we wanna run it twice. I say that's fine by me. We're off to see five cards twice. The first board comes down ace high, and the second board comes down uh, lower, lower cards. My opponent shows us ace king. So uh, we're gonna chop this one up. Maybe slightly unlucky, but I think when we run it twice, we're probably gonna chop a decent percentage of the time. He's still gonna win the hand outright somewhere around a third of the time when we run it one time. So uh, probably can't be too upset, I guess, about uh, about chopping this one. Not sure how thrilled I would be in uh, my opponent's shoes to just go ahead and get the ace-king in preflop facing a three bet and a four bet. But again, with the straddle on, stack sizes are effectively cut in half. So how bad can it be? It's fun to play the what-if game, though. Uh, if that opponent had folded the ace-king, if he had let it go facing the four bet, you have to imagine that the player on the button would at least flat call with, with the queens and uh, it comes low cards on the flop. So we probably find a way to get it in versus the queens. We probably scoop a big one. So the uh, ace king definitely throws a wrench into those plans. But like I said, stack sizes are effectively cut in half. So can't really blame him too much. But yeah, he should have got out of the way. We should have won a big pot there. Anyway, moving on to the next hand in which we are looking down at the second best hand ever invented by humankind. Once again, Pocket Kings, $40 to go from under the gun, and the same opponent from the previous hand that we got all in against makes it $110 to go out of the hijack. Folds back over to us, and uh, even though there's no straddle on in this hand, I've seen a, a few more hands up to this point now, and it seems like my opponent doesn't uh, find himself in a, uh, a fold happy mood, so Pocket Kings just gonna try and pump more money in here. There was, a, there was a B just now, but uh, just gonna try and put more money in here as fast as possible. Even though my range is going to be pretty snug here, opening from under the gun, facing a three bet, and now putting in a four bet. The range is gonna be pretty narrow, but uh, just based on some things that I've seen, gonna raise it up again, $330 to go now. My opponent slides more chips into the middle, more than the 330, uh, effectively putting us all in if we decide to continue, which of course we are. We didn't drive all the way to the Bellagio from downtown to full pocket king. So. We're gonna be all in again here, and my opponent asks if we wanna rent twice. 
same situation. I say sure, but this time we're up against pocket kings, the other two kings. There is some drama though. The first flop on the first board brings two hearts and the turn is a third heart and my opponent has the king of hearts. Luckily, we faded on the river. However, on the second board, we see three clubs right away on the flop and my opponent has the king of clubs free rolling us once again. We faded on the turn and we faded on the river. Faded on the river. Okay, so just trying to, uh, you know, create some drama here for the uh, the poker show pocket kings versus pocket kings it ends up being anticlimactic but just feel the drama pulsing through your veins that i just created on this little youtube poker show i did that i created that all right so things not exactly uh, falling into place for us things not exactly falling into place for us in the must move game uh, we get moved into a main game stuck about 400 dollars or so and in this hand we see a limp from the under the gun player before we look down at ace jack off suit. I'm gonna raise it up here, try and ISO the limper, make it $50 to go. The small blind calls and the limper calls. So we are three ways here heading to a flop, which comes down king high and pretty dry. Action shucks over to me and I think I can bluff pretty cheaply here since it's not gonna improve too many people and I think we have a range advantage. So $60 is the wager size that I choose. Small blind folds right away and the limper, the player who had limp called, he makes the call here. Turn is an offsuit nine, checks it over to me. We don't improve to a gut shot straight draw or a pair, so I'm just gonna go ahead and check this back here. River is a queen and my opponent checks again. So I'm not uh, thinking that ace jack is gonna win here at showdown all that often. I think he's gonna have some single pair holdings a pretty decent percentage of the time. And I don't think it's gonna be a king all that often since I would imagine my opponent would bet the river some decent percentage of the time and probably not limp call from early position with too many kings. So. I'm gonna turn this uh, ace high into a bluff. It might have some showdown value, but I don't feel like it's all that much. So I start assembling a bet somewhere around 180 bucks, but my opponent has released his hand before I can even release the bet over the line. So uh, again, I'm not too sure ex what exactly I'm representing there. Uh, probably not king queen because I'd fire the turn. Probably not 10 jack because I would fire the turn. Probably not ace queen, although I would probably bet for value, but probably not for that much. Anyway, we, we can just apply some raw pressure to uh, some single some single pair, low pair-ish holdings-esque type hands and uh, take it down. Pretty fun one here when we open up pocket nines, $30, butt calls, big blind calls as well. So three ways to a flop, which comes down queen high this time, but again, pretty dry. Big blind checks, same thinking as before. I'm gonna bet small and uh, try and fold out some over cards to the pocket nines. I bet $30, but both players make the call. Turns of five, big blind checks. I decide to check it this time and actually check all the way through. River is a 10, big blind checks. I'm gonna check trying to get to showdown, but the button is apparently not trying to get to showdown. He bets $60. Big blind folds pretty quickly and uh, kind of a weird spot here because uh, how many queens is he going to have that didn't bet the turn? How many two pairs or sets or straights is he going to have that didn't bet the turn? And uh, how often is he going to value bet a 10? I mean, I guess maybe some percentage of the time, maybe ace 10, he floated the flop with. The bet was pretty cheap, so I keep ranges pretty wide on the flop, but feels a little iffy. And your boy Andrew here is going to put on his curiosity cap. We're going to see what we're up against. and. What we're up against is ace deuce. Um, yeah, keep ranges wide with the small bet. So um, I'm a fan. One more hand and I'm not exactly sure how to feel about it. I'm sure you guys will tell me how to feel about it though after I tell you what happened. So there's a good player, good reg here at the Bellagio who raises it up to $30 from the hijack and we look down at king jack off suit on the button. <laughs> On paper, probably uh, a fold and maybe three bets sometimes. I decide neither. I decide on the flat call. There is at least one recreational player in the small blind and I'm not too sure uh, who the player is in the big blind. And uh, I don't think there's gonna be uh, too much value in three betting against the opener here with this holding that plays mediocre. Um, maybe that's a case for just folding preflop, which I can definitely understand, but uh, I'm kind of card dead and folding sucks and uh, uh, I'm bored. Four ways to a flop of jack, eight, seven, rainbow. So flop top pair, decent kicker, but pretty connected, interesting board. The players in the blinds check and the initial raiser checks as well. So um, I think with this many players in the mix, uh, I'm gonna start betting and charging various holdings. And it's probably just gonna be 
a bet fold if we face uh, a check raise from anybody here. So I bet $90 and both the players in the blinds fold, but the initial raiser makes the call, which is pretty interesting um, because he could easily be pot controlling with a hand that's better than ours um, since he's up against three players, but he could also have a lot of hands such as eight, nine, pocket tens, pocket nines, 10, seven suited, queen jack, pocket deuces, no, okay. Um, but anyway, uh, there's some hands that we beat and some hands that we lose to. Um, the turn doesn't really change too much and he checks it over to us again. So it's kind of an iffy spot here because as mentioned, there's some hands that we could be behind, but there's also a lot of hands that we don't really want to give a free card to. Lots of hands where there could be some disaster river cards for us. Don't know if I need to bet too big, but also don't want to give too good of a price to those hands. So kind of a kind of a weird spot here that we put ourselves in, probably with a marginal preflop call. Usually these sorts of situations lead back to that part of the hand. Um, but anyway, I decided another wager and I bet 200, $210 here. Uh, my opponent thinks for a while and makes the call. River is another jack, so pretty interesting card here. Only happened to be losing to ace jack, which potentially pot controlled on the flop. But aside from that, I think we are beating pretty much everything now. I wouldn't expect my opponent to be slow playing a flop straight uh, or a flop set. So I think after my opponent checks over to me, we can pretty confidently value bet here. Only losing to ace jack that uh, decided to slow play on the flop. I decided a wager of $440 here. Again, not sure if that's uh, a super ideal size. I think it's uh, an interesting spot where you could choose a, a couple of different options here, but 440 it is. And my opponent thinks for a pretty decent while before making a, what looks like a very reluctant and sigh type of call. Tosses in the 440, we go ahead and roll it over, and my opponent shows us pocket aces. So yeah, uh, happy with my decision to not three bet preflop, but not sure I love the flat call in the first place. Um, not sure I am completely in love with a turn bet, but probably feels okay based on how I sort of sum up his range there. And uh, feels dirty, but uh, they can't keep a good man down, you know? I got it in with kings, only preflop versus ace king and chop. Cracking the pocket aces with the king jack off suit. Easy game, all right. Uh, that's, uh, that's a session, get into the game for $2,000, cash out of the game for uh, somewhere around 2,954 or some odd dollars, something like that. So uh, $950 profit. Was card dead for a while, um, aside from getting pocket kings and uh, not really being able to accomplish much with them. Anyway, happy to have gotten one more session in uh, before election Tuesday. Happy election Tuesday, everyone. I don't know if anybody is even watching this. Some of you will tune in to escape the utter madness of it all, others of you have your eyes glued to Twitter. Maybe you'll get to this vlog next month.